Hey folks, this is Mike Tholfson, and I'm coming at you from the Microsoft Education team. This is our second remote webinar that we've been doing. Totally experimental process. Things could go crazy. We're not really sure. We're figuring it out as we go. And so this is all for the Engaging Remote Community team. And today's topic is going to be IT and deployment. It's very important right now. We have some product experts, and we're hoping to bring you an educator expert as well. So I'm going to share my screen here. And as I said, my name is Mike Tholfson. I'm on the education team. I work on OneNote education as well as inclusive classroom. But today I'm going to be talking more as an MC or a host. And so for our agenda, we always start out with the latest news and updates. And so I'll be talking about those for a minute. Then we have Bill Sluss, who are his amazing deployment and IT and school data sync expert. For all of you who are trying to get up and running with Microsoft Teams, your first stop should be school data sync. And then we want to bring on Scott Titmus, who's a great Teams, I would say, pro, who is from Old Bridge School District, New Jersey. He's helped roll out and deploy, and he's done amazing things with Teams in his district. So, just like yesterday, if you joined us yesterday, three quick links. These are always the same three we're going to start with. Make sure you go to the Microsoft Education Remote Learning site. There's the Teams for EDU Quick Start Guide. And then also, many of you have signed up. But if you have others that want to join the remote learning community, share this link. With them. In terms of the updates for today, uh, want to reiterate the announcement from yesterday for those of you that didn't hear we had a great announcement with teams meetings and canvas lms integration so a big announcement that you'll be able to link up teams meetings with your canvas calendar items in a really seamless way and so justin chando angel and some engineers worked together really quickly to get that integration out the other one that you'll probably hear from bill is we've updated our documents for deployment. So we've got a great document, which is fast deployment for remote learning. It's a fantastic document that walks you through the steps on getting up and running quickly with your school or your district. And lastly, we'll be launching the MEC Family Center page. I think right about now or any hour now, uh, we're going to have a great update in a Microsoft Education Center with a bunch of family learning content. There's a lot of people at home who are helping out their children with learning. And Microsoft and Flipgrid have partnered and put together some great content there. So with that, what I'm going to do now is turn it over. We're going to talk about school data sync, deployment, and fast track. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Bill Sluss. So Bill, if you want to take over from me, I'm going to uh, unshare and I will. Uh, I'll let you go unless you want me to do the slides. Uh, uh, no. Whichever works best. I, I I can share directly as well. Thanks, Mike. Great. Take it away, Bill. Yep. Uh, let me share. And get the presentation up. Okay. So hopefully everybody uh, can see my screen now. Um, so great to meet everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Sluss. I'm the program manager for School Data Sync. Um, I oversee all things uh, related to design development, product roadmap, and, and that sort of thing with SDS and have a broader role within the Office CBU team, um, really around anything deployment or IT related. So from identity, security and compliance, all, all of those fun pieces. Um, so today we're going to talk mostly about SDS and what it is and, and how you can think about using it and, and incorporating it into your plan for remote learning deployments. Um, so at a high level, uh, uh, School Data Sync, also known as SDS, it's a, a free web app and service inside of every Office 365 education tenant. Um, it is intended to connect to your student information system uh, or management information system or SMS as, as it's known in some regions of the world uh, or, or just in, in just data in any form of, of a variety of CSV file formats. And so we pull that data in uh, to do a whole bunch of things with it. Um, the, the core capabilities that we want to make available is, is that we want to be able to send through data around your teachers and students, and we do things like user provisioning um, or, or synchronizing users. And then we send through class information to create 
uh, Office 365 groups and teams, and, and that drives uh, remote learning, com common collab scenarios, and facilitates OneNote class notebook integration and, and a whole variety of things there. And then we also send through school information, um, which can be leveraged in a few different ways to build out things like administrative units and security groups. Um, some of the, the foundational scopes that you need to really manage Office 365 and deploy at scale. Um, and so I'll, I'll talk about all of those things in detail, but at, at a high level, it's it's a web app. It's, it's a tool that, that you can use with a friendly interface that allows you to synchronize the data through so you can help uh, teachers set up and, and deploy the things that they need to use so they can use them more easily, or it'll it'll help deploy the things that IT needs to, to facilitate downstream policies. So let's uh, let's walk through a few of those. Um, so as we synchronize data in, um, it, it's important to call out there, there are a few different methods uh, that we have in SDS to get data into the system. Right? Ultimately, we want to land that data in Azure Active Directory. We want to build out all of the things that I talked about. Um, but to get data in, we, we really have two, two primary methods. The first is that we have a collection of student information systems uh, from all around the world that we support a direct API connection with. And what that means is you can go into SDS, you can put in uh, the credentials that associate with your student information system, and we establish a direct connection with that system and pull data directly over the pipe. Um, the other method, uh, which is available to, to anyone and everyone, is that regardless of what system you're running, it, it could be a database that's sitting in a closet somewhere, it could be one of the systems that you see up here on the screen, um, doesn't really matter, but if you can export your data into one of our available CSV file formats, uh, either the SDS format or the Clever format, you can ingest data in just the same way, right? So it's sort of the catch-all, no matter what system you have, CSV files work and, and you can send them right into SDS and we'll provision out all of the things uh, that you intend. We also have a, a flow connector um, that, that can set up and make CSV synchronization feel more like API synchronization. So after you can automate an export from your sys into these CSV formats, we can enable the flow connector uh, to, on a regular scheduled basis, pull in that data systematically on a daily or, or even hourly basis, um, depending on your needs. Um, so, so automation on both for sure, uh, but, but definitely different, different capabilities across. Drilling in a bit deeper, one of the, the primary foundational things that we do in SDS is we have to synchronize users. Um, and so if you already have users in your directory, um, the, the method of synchronization is we want to synchronize existing users and we just evolve identity. So we stamp in things, metadata extension attributes on the already existing user objects. Um, and it's important to note that when we do that, if your users already exist, they it can be coming from your on-premise Active Directory environment. They can be cloud-only identities. It doesn't really matter from our perspective. All we do is add some additional metadata on those users. Um, another core capability, though, that SDS has is that we can actually create the users if you don't have a tenant running already. And so if, if your, your starting point is, is really zero, you haven't onboarded to Office 365, you just want to get that initial deployment, cloud-only deployment out the door, you can upload files to SDS and we will provision out users and assign licenses on that provisioning process, right? So it, it really takes you from, from nothing to the, the full spectrum of, of Office 365 tech with very little effort um, and, and setup time. So those are the two models for synchronizing users and they really set the stage for everything else that SDS does. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is, is around classes. Uh, so today you can also upload a, a classes CSV or you can pull across classes from your sys if you have an API connection. And, and really it's these three primary use cases, right? Microsoft intends for the, the virtual classroom environment to, to live within Teams. I, I think everybody is talking about Teams these days and wants to deploy Teams. So we model all of the classes that comes in uh, as a corresponding class team, and then you can fire up and provision on top of OneNote class notebook, um, and that builds out sections for all of the students and teachers within your class. And really underneath of those teams, though, you also have an Office 365 group, uh, and a group ports to a variety of services across the Office stack. So uh, certainly it, it, it's the back end of, of everything that we do within Teams, but if you're using something like Planner or, or Stream, um, those other applications within our, our broader platform uh, are also group enabled. So 
building out classes as groups really in, empowers the entire ecosystem and, and set of applications that we offer. In addition to doing classes, we also provision security groups. And so as you look out as, as an IT admin within Office 365, nearly every policy or configuration, whether you're um, deploying devices or applications, managing identity, um, all of those policy configurations at the heart of them, you often need to, to specify a security group to define what that or which users that policy would apply to. Um, and so if you're deploying devices, things like uh, Intune Education Device Policy or setting up MDM policy, for example, you need security groups um, that manage those scopes. And apps, uh, certainly conditional access policy, who can use which app, um, group and team creation policy, all of these things require a, a security group. And in SDS, we have a couple types of security groups that we build out. So we will create an all teachers group, we'll create an all students group, and then assuming you send a school information through, we'll create on a, we can create on a per school basis, uh, teachers of school, students of school, and then an all up school security group that contains both teachers and students. Um, and those things can be really powerful. It really gets you halfway to actually managing the platform at scale. Um, so security group provisioning is a huge scenario for SDS. We would encourage everybody to take advantage of that capability as well. And of course, it, it requires that you synchronize all of your users um, as a foundation to make that work. Um, the last scenario that I'll talk about is really around AU provisioning. Uh, so AUs are a unique type of group in Office 365. Um, they're entirely intended for uh, role-based delegation. Um, and so if you want to provide administrative privileges uh, to certain people within your directory, but you don't want them to be able to manage the entire directory, you need administrative units. Um, and so we have two scenarios in SDS where we build administrative units. The first is that for every school that we synchronize, we'll add in every teacher, student, and class to that AU. And then you can use roles like the help desk administrator role, and you can assign school-based administrators effectively to manage just the students, teachers, and classes associated with a given school. Um, the new scenario, uh, which is in preview right now, but certainly we can we can plug to you if if you request it through our onboarding team, is uh, teacher password reset. So uh, again, here we're building out AUs on a per school basis. Um, only we we include just the students of the school, uh, and then we enable uh, or provide the ability to enable um, any teacher to reset the passwords of students in their respective school. SDS's role in that picture is we provide all of the scopes, the foundational AUs, and then we also provide a UI to enable any teacher to actually do those resets on a per school basis. Um, so that's a new capability. We're, we're hoping to GA that soon, uh, but it is available in preview right now if you need it. And so um, those are the, the core capabilities of SDS that, that we commonly see, certainly if you want to enable uh, Office 365 at scale as an IT admin. Um, we believe strongly in, in the SDS value proposition such that um, we make deployment free uh, for, for all of our customers. And so if you're an organization looking to onboard and, and you want to use SDS, um, the, those second two links we provide at no cost. Um, so we have an onboarding deployment team. You can go to aka.ms slash SDS sign up. Um, and then our team will help walk you through the process of deploying SDS at whatever scale you need. We also offer free support at aka.ms forward slash SDS support. Um, and if, if you're in a scenario where you're coming from, say, an AD on-prem integration and you need to enable hybrid identity with things like AAD Connect, ADFS, or enable Exchange Hybrid, I'd recommend uh, going to the Fast Track team, and that's that first link that you see there on the screen, fasttrack.microsoft.com. Um, a couple new links that, that we just uh, got out in, in the last week or two, um, specifically around deploying re remote learning solutions quickly. Um, we, we have a deployment from AD on-prem. Uh, we have fast deployment with SDS if, if you need you know, just a cloud only environment that's turnkey that you can get up and running within a day or two. Um, we have a deployment decision guide that sort of walks through both of those scenarios and paints the picture of which one might be the right one for you. Um, and then lastly, 
the the new announcement with the canvas integration that uh, that Mike referenced, which, which is absolutely amazing. In order for that LMS integration to work, you have to make sure that you have users in Azure Active Directory and in Office 365 that are licensed in order to take advantage uh, of, of that LMS configuration. And so for that, we published a, a new article that's specifically tailored to the most streamlined version of creating users, which is applicable to both uh, K-12 and higher ed scenarios. Um, so, so check that out. The, this the stack will be made available, um, and the links will be in here as well. And with that, I think we're going to turn it over to Scott. Right, hey, Scott. thanks, Bill. And this is Mike. I'm going to share my screen back. And we are super lucky to have Mr. Scott Chitmus. And just as a background, uh, I've known Scott for a few years, and we started up these webinars and. OK, who's the man with the plan? Who's one of the best teams deployment training masters in the universe? And it has to be Mr. Scott Titmus. And so we have him here with us and I'm going to interview him and ask him some questions on deployment and training when he's done. And Scott, if you want to swap over to video, if you want to share out the video so we can so we can see Scott, then uh, Matt, that would be fantastic on your end. And what I'm going to do here is uh, I'll stop presenting and, and let Matt switch over to Scott's video. And, and Matt is our behind the scenes producer, Matt Whitehead. Thank you for for uh, all the fantastic production. So there we go. Yeah, so Scott, why don't you introduce yourself first? Just uh, let everyone know here who you are and what you do. Yeah, so uh, like you said, Scott Titmus. I'm a technology integration specialist in Old Bridge, New Jersey. So. Um, a counterpart and I, we service our about 10,000 students and around 1,000 teachers in a Microsoft EDU district. And so you've been with us since sort of the beginning of a lot of the team's work. So tell people sort of what you did, how you helped manage the rollout, uh, how did SDS and Teams play together in that process? Yeah, so when we when we first started with Teams, it was we had piloted Microsoft Classroom previously, and then when it rolled over to Teams and really started ramping up, it was really just optional in our district. Uh, teachers wanted to try it, they could. If they didn't want to, they didn't have to. Uh, so my counterpart, Jim, and I were really kind of just rolling out one-to-one -one PD, meeting with individual teachers who had said they, they wanted to try this new thing. Um, and then from there, as things grew, once uh, more and more teachers wanted to use it. We really started to see the value in it. That's when we started using SDS and that kind of took everything to the next level. And so maybe talk about that. And I think here's yeah. a here's a way to think about it. Right now, there's a whole lot of people who might be in the process of saying, wow, we have to do this really fast. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if you have sort of a, the wisdom of Scott acquired through uh, the, the do's and don'ts, what are some great like tomorrow using tips that you can give for people? I, I honestly, the biggest tip is just to start using the SDS. Um, I don't want to sound like a sales pitch or anything like that, but uh, when teacher before SDS, we had our teachers manually creating their teams, manually adding the students, which we know is really not that difficult. Um, but when you're trying to scale quickly, SDS itself, it rostered all of our teams, all the teachers were set up and the teachers who were saying like, ah, you know, I'm not sure if I could use it. I don't know if I could even set it up. I was able to say, OK, log in. It's already done for you. Your teams are created. Everything's done. Uh, and to me, that that was huge. And we saw across our district, once teams were automatically created through SDS, uh, the, the buy in skyrocketed. I think uh, in talking to Justin Chando, our numbers as far as usage are, are high up there. Um, I think we have, like I said, around 10,000 teachers and almost all of them are using it. So what would you say be sure to not do? Unless you've been perfect. Maybe it's been perfect for you, Scott. You're, you're a pretty awesome guy, so maybe it was perfect. If there are some things where you're like, mm, I would avoid doing X or Y or Z, what might that be? You know, I don't, I don't know if there's a don't do. I think it's just there's a lot of things that we ran into that maybe we didn't have enough PD out at first, right? Um, like small things like maybe that, you know, before we were really using Teams in the very beginning, it was we had this great internal debate of OneNote or Teams or which one first, right? So I guess back in the day, the don't was don't start the OneNote first because then you could just add it to Teams if you do that. Um, but I wouldn't say there's a don't. It's just like use SDS. That really was the biggest buy-in piece. 
uh, and then make sure that there's enough PD to follow it um, We with Teams itself. We did find that, uh, you know, and still occasionally I get an email that says, hey, you know, like I've been using Teams, everything's great, but I just wish there was a better way uh, to not get a bunch of emails with assignments. And I'm like, well, that's you need a little help. Uh, let's let's show you how to actually use the assignments tab, you know, um, because I think people jumped in so quickly that maybe they weren't aware of exactly how to use everything. Well, what about so you probably worked fairly closely? Well, I, I actually don't know the exact structure, but you've got IT administrators, you yep. probably have people you might work with. So maybe talk about the job roles and work with these different people. Sure. So, um, like I said, myself and Jimmy Anazelli. Uh, our tech in, tech integration specialist. We do have, and I think he's even on this call, Sean McCoy, he's our, our network admin. So he really handles all the licensing and everything with Microsoft on the back end. Jim and I play a big role in the, the PD that goes out. Um, from there in our district, we have building support people who kind of take tech requests. Um, but in all of that, the PD has come from, um, at the district level, we have like model classrooms and things like that. Do you want me to get into the PD? Yeah, that was actually going to be next, and maybe now you can talk about what you did, but obviously we're kind of in a new world now where a lot of this might be remote PD. So maybe yeah. if you can put a spin on, well, we did this, but you could do that. That might help people who are listening. Sure. So uh, originally, you know, so we had uh, what we call the Old Bridge Professional Learning Academy where teachers were able to sign up for professional days, uh, and a lot of that was technology based. So we were running those. We also ran individual one to one PDs where a teacher has a question or just wants to learn teams i would go out or jim would go out um, and then we also did model classrooms which allowed teachers who were just teaching their classes to be observed by their colleagues uh, and i think that was really helpful for teachers to see what teams looked like being implemented um, obviously we're kind of teaching and learning in a different world over these last few weeks and probably for the next few weeks um, we kind of have plans to really use teams for the same type of concepts uh, once things settle down here where uh, we might run PD sessions. I saw, I don't know if she's on this call, but Kathy Kersnowski, who's another uh, awesome Microsoft ED rock star, uh, she's running PD sessions almost every day where teachers could just jump in live um, and see her demonstrate Teams or OneNote or whatever the case is. So uh, that's something that's on our radar, I think for one-to-one -one, uh, as, as well as groups, just for the time being. Yeah, that's great. And, and in terms of well, we'll get wrapped up here, but what, do you have any words of advice, or wisdom? What do you suggest for the people out there who, who might be new to all this, uh, you know, coming from the, I'll call you Obi-Wan Kenobi, or, you know, I, I don't know if I'll go so far Yoda, because, you know, Yoda's pretty old and you're not that old. <laughs> but as Obi-Wan Kenobi, what's your sage wisdom around SDS deployment teams and sort of getting set up? Well, I would say, and again, I mentioned Sean, our, our network admin, who's probably on this call. Uh, we we were very much novices. I think I still personally am, but what's helped us succeed is just utilizing uh, this whole team and the resources that are out there, like right now the remote learning team um, and through Twitter and just the, the general support from Microsoft um, education team has been really helpful because we didn't really know everything that we needed to do, but we know that we're always able to jump on a call with someone or, or send somebody a message on Teams. And that's really what I think has uh, led to our success. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for joining us today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, Scott's slide back up there. And if you don't already follow Scott on Twitter, I got his Twitter handle. He's a he's real fun to collaborate with on Twitter. Has lots of great content. And we're going to be wrapping up now. So recap of the resources. There is the key Microsoft remote learning site. There's the Teams EDU Quick Start Guide. And again, if you are going to be talking with others in your area, have them sign up for the Teams Remote Learning Community. There's a link there. And then we will be posting today's PowerPoint. Very So the PowerPoint deck will be publicly available. We'll be posting the video inside of the remote. And Matt Whitehead's working on a stream channel to get those posted. And just a reminder, any support you want, File us a ticket. We've got great folks who can help out. And lastly, this is upcoming webinars. Tomorrow we've got Flipgrid. Woo! Flipgrid Home and Family. And we'll be joined by Joey Terrelson and Cosma, Jess Boyce. Then we've got staff collaboration and distance learning on Friday. 
And then on Monday, this will be a big topic, how to do remote PD. We've got some great special guests. We've got Kathy Kavanaugh, Becky Keene. And we'll keep putting these out. And like I said, we're figuring out how to go. So uh, any technical difficulties, blame us. We're still figuring it out as we go. And thank you very much.